What is the word hostile? What does it mean? And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. Wow, I messed up that outro intro. We are here in Los Angeles, California in Santa Monica, staying at the Hostling International Hostel of Santa Monica in Los Angeles. That was a mouthful. Literally, your mouth is full huh. of disgustingness. So today we're going to be covering a very important topic here on the Traveling Clat. And I'm gonna explain to you essentially what the heck a hostel is. I realize I've been traveling around the world for the last four years, staying at a bunch of hostels, and I've never taken the second to explain to you what a hostel is. And I said, let's take the opportunity to do it with the amazing hostel that we're staying with because we're doing a partnership with Hosteling International United States. They're sponsoring us up for the days that we're here in LA and we're staying with their amazing hostel here in Santa Monica. I was like, why not? We could also give you guys a hostel tour of this amazing hostel and explain to you what the heck a hostel is and why it's beneficial for budget travelers, travelers in general, to just stay at hostels. So we're gonna break this video into a few parts, but I just wanna let you know, before we start the video officially, I wanna make sure that you guys subscribe and turn on those notifications because we always do budget travel tips and stuff like that on this channel, on this channel. It's a channel, isn't it? And it's good for you to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss those those little videos that pop up because YouTube doesn't like to notify people about videos anymore. Hostling International, thank you very much. We appreciate the sponsorship with you. And with that, let's begin explaining what the heck a hostel is. Before we give you a tour of this and we explain to you the benefits of staying in a hostel, let's actually explain to you what a hostel is. What is the word hostel? What does it mean? So according to the definition on the internet, the word hostel actually means an establishment that provides inexpensive food and lodging for a specific group of people such as students, workers, or travelers. Short for youth hostel. Hostels, yeah, tend to be catered more towards youth or backpacking or budget travelers, but on the off chance, especially in a place like this, I've actually noticed that hostels can be beneficial to any person traveling from any background. Now another thing is hostels usually range in prices, and so sometimes they're very expensive, sometimes they're very cheap, sometimes you'll have boutique hostels, sometimes you'll have hole in the wall hostels that are legitimately just a hole in the wall. Now I'm talking about a legitimate hole in a wall. But yes, a hostel is usually an inexpensive place for people to stay. Hostels are meant to be a social environment usually with with a lot of people with common goals, usually doing something common in the area, whether you're backpacking or traveling or surfing or hiking, whatever, in that specific area. They're usually designated for those people to gather around, have a good time, find some cheap accommodation, make some new friends. Now a hostel doesn't always have to be this, it doesn't always have to be a social environment, but most of the times you tend to find a lot of like-minded people staying in that same type of environment. We have stayed in hostels in literally every country I think that I've ever traveled to. Every country they have been the same kind of style. You go in and there's always someone friendly in the front desk, you check in and they show you where your accommodation is and they tell you pretty much this is your bunk bed, it's usually a bunk bed. But that being said, some hostels do offer private rooms or private dorms so you can just sleep with yourself or Whatever. So now that we've clarified what a hostel actually is, which is a social gathering for people to sleep for cheap, I guess that would be kind of the best way to, to cover it. Well, we'll talk about what kind of different hostels you can find around the world. So, hostels change forever. Hey! Simon! So, hostels change dramatically depending on where you are in the world and what kind of budget you're willing to spend. A hostel like this, Hosteling International USA in Santa Monica, is very different than let's say a $3 a night hostel that you'll find in the Philippines. Now, that being said, is the goal of the establishment pretty much the same? Overall, I would say a big whopping yes. Because let's say a hostel that I've stayed at in Sikihor that was literally $3 a night. Dirty, stinky mattresses with cockroaches running around the room and a cockroach in the toilet, if y'all remember that. Literally sand fleas on the beach outside of the house. $3 a night, but still, totally a bunch of like-minded people all backpacking, all wanting the same goal of talking and socializing and having a good time. And you come over here in one of the most expensive cities of the world, Los Angeles, and you're hanging out in this hostel, and it's the same environment. You got bunk beds, yes, a lot cleaner, shower room, 
beautiful. But overall, same goal, people running through the hostel, all with backpacks traveling from around the world, all with a like-minded goal of exploring a city and enjoying the environment while also socializing and making friends in the place itself. And that's why I find hostels to be so, so amazing and I always, always recommend them wherever I go. And one of the biggest things is when we're doing all these sponsorships with different companies, we've stayed in Airbnbs, in five-star hotels, and guest houses, the overall theme that I find connecting to the most and the people who I make the most friends with and the places where I end up socializing the most and even making friends with the owners of the places the most have always been hostels. So now that we've covered the different types of hostels that you'll find around the world, let's cover why should you stay at a hostel. So I think the personal benefit between staying in a hostel rather than a hotel or Airbnb or something like that is the social aspect that you get from it. Like we mentioned before, this is a very social environment and making friends in a hostel, especially when you're traveling alone, is one of the most important and, and smart things you could possibly do for yourself. I think when I started traveling, I did most of what I was doing by myself. I didn't really have Moshe coming along with me to a lot of things and I wasn't able to make a lot of friends on the internet because my YouTube channel wasn't that big. And so I couldn't really just send a message to whatever city I'm in and say hey I'm in this city tonight who wants to hang out and have like a bunch of people just saying hey I'm from here let's hang out it was usually by myself on a pretty lonely journey and so one of the best ways I met a lot of people were in hostels a really good story for you guys is one time I was in Paris for New Year's and I went in all alone without any friends there uh, and I was on my way to England and I had a stopover in Paris for New Year's and I stayed at a hostel and immediately when I was in my room I had these three Nepali guys that were from Nepal and uh, they were just so fascinated by my ukulele and they wanted to know how it worked and everything and so I started letting them play with it and they, they, they offered me alcohol and we sat down and started drinking together and then boom one thing leads to another and you have three friends from Nepal just like that I ended up having friends to hang out with the New Year's I was gonna go off and just watch the fireworks from the Eiffel Tower by myself just a clan from the hostel and we were hanging out together and we ended up being friends and we actually still keep in touch till this day and that wouldn't have happened if I would have stayed at like a hotel or an Airbnb and actually the night before I was staying in a hotel in Paris and it was a completely lonely experience granted it was a lot cleaner it was a lot nicer but it wasn't the same social environment so I think for one a really important thing is that if you are looking for people to meet while you're staying somewhere a hostel is like the smartest possible thing you could do for yourself besides being budget friendly it's such a smart way to meet people who are like-minded and I assure you really if you've never done this before and if you're curious about it go stay at a hostel on your next trip even if it's just for one night and see how many friends you walk out making just go introduce yourself to one person or while you're sitting in a bunk bed across from somebody else just say hello and see how many friends you're able to make I assure you, you'll be able to leave with a few new people in your life. And that's a promise from the traveling fat himself. Now, when you're traveling in third world countries, a hostel tends to be like 75 to 90% cheaper than a hotel. Hotels in a lot of places, just because they have the name hotel, tend to overcharge you by a lot. I recommend scouting for hostels before you ever look at a hotel if you're thinking about budget. Especially if you're coming with a group of people, sometimes they will offer you deals. But yeah, overall hostels tend to be a lot cheaper than a hotel or Airbnb or a guest house in general. So it's always smart, I think, to inquire about hostels before you travel to your next destination. And with that being covered, we're going to jump back into our sponsored bit of this video with Hostling International USA. We're gonna show you guys kind of a quick hostel tour of like a really beautiful and nice, well thought out hostel. I really wanted to do kind of like a focus on this hostel as like a as a really nice spot in this video because this hostel is so well built and so beautiful. There's not many hostels that I've been to that have been this nice and the location is freaking perfect. The environment around it is so beautiful and the environment on the inside, the cleanliness, everything is just fantastic. And when you find a hostel like this, they're far and few in between so you really want to Give them that extra love. So first of all, the Hostling International USA in Santa Monica, Los Angeles is located in a prime time location just around a mile away from Venice Beach, California. It sits right next to the Santa Monica Pier. It's literally like maybe a five minute to 10 minute walk away from here. There are tons of stores, shops, bars all around this entire area. And when you head into the hostel itself, you have this really, really well designed and cool kind of like lobby entrance area. We immediately, when me and Moshe walked in here yesterday, we're like, whoa. So you enter, everything is done here with this little keyless door uh, card entry thing. So you get this little card when you check in and then you just tap it on the door and you're able to enter inside. You get that at reception, which are really nice, always have some awesome staff. They're always there to give you some information and help you out when booking tours and stuff because this hostel actually offers tours as well. And they have a room to be able to hold your bags as well before you check in because check in here is around 3 p.m. So when you enter the hostel, you have these awesome corridors right here with different sitting spaces and the actual outdoor sitting space which is one of the coolest things I've seen in the hostel yet. 
There's a whole outdoor just sitting space with a bunch of cool little couches and, and seats and stuff. And then we have our dining area, dining corridors. Every morning in this hostel, you are offered a breakfast. I think the breakfast ends at like 10 a.m. You can get like some breads and cereals and milk, which is a really useful thing. And you can just save your money and eat here in the hostel in the morning. As well, you have some vending machines in this breakfast area. And this is also kind of like the area you can chill out with computers. You have fast Wi-Fi running throughout the entire hostel pretty much. And then we can head on up to the accommodation. We are staying up on the fourth floor. So when we head on in to the hallway of this hostel, we're gonna reach the bathroom. Actually, most hostels are designed to be sex only. Not sex only, why would I say sex only? It's like you have to have sex to go in the hostel. Most hostels are designed to be kind of split sex hostels. Split sex, that's not it. Most hostels are designed to be divided between males and females, so males and females usually stay in different places. It's usually designated before they let you know if it's a mixed sex room, but most times it's divided between males and females, they're in separate places. So actually on the fourth floor, there's part that's for the females, parts for the males. If you just walk down in our hallway, you eventually reach the male bathroom, which I freaking love so much. For a hostel to invest this, this amount of time and care into making such a beautiful bathroom is so appreciative on my end. You have a beautiful sink and mirror area you got a beautiful uh, little hair dryer there you got towels for the shower floor and we walk into the actual shower itself this is kind of the jumbo shower this is the big one there's smaller showers but look at this thing there's there's water running now we leave the bathrooms we head down the hallway a little bit and we enter our room and this is our accommodation we got a six bed bunk bed room dorm there's a lot of space as well we have lockers designated for every single bed everything is organized when you come in they request that you please do stay in the bed provided you don't switch beds so it's nice that everybody kind of knows what their bed is it's not like a grab and go type situation where you just grab whichever beds open the beds are very comfortable the mattress is very comfortable and the AC is always running here at the same temperature that pretty much covers this hostel tour. This is our room. Thank you very much once again, Hostel International USA for sponsoring this video and putting us up in this awesome hostel. We are going to finish this hostel video here and let you guys know that you check them out down in the description below. If you ever want to stay in a hostel around the world, Hostel International actually has a bunch of hostels everywhere. We have stayed with them in the UK, in Israel, in the Philippines. So do not miss out on staying with Hostel International. They have been one of the best, strongest supporters of my channel and I, I just can't, I can't stop loving them enough. So please send them some love. Go follow them on Instagram. Everything will be down in the description below. It's so weird being back in the continental United States. It's freaking strange. We're going to continue journeying around Los Angeles for the next few days before we head out east and continue journeying to Miami. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Make sure you check out the travelingclad.com if you want to maybe support this channel. You can get yourself some merchandise like a shirt or a hoodie or or, or a mug. And subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video from this channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. We're going to give you your English word of the day today, which is going to be a dinosaur because I'm just feeling a dinosaur today. And that's going to be Pachycephalosaurus. That was a dinosaur that had a dome on its head and it used to go into each other. I don't know why I chose that one. I love you a lot of time. We're going to see you in the next one. Goodbye, class.